Good morning, everyone. This is the time and place for the zoning cases hearing for August 11, 2010. My name is Brad Collin, and I will be conducting the hearing as a hearing officer today. We have two cases scheduled, and the relevant exhibits are provided behind me and behind our case planner on the screen. If you wish to speak, please write your name and address on the speaker forms which have been provided at the back of the room and submit it to our planning assistant. I'd like to also inform everyone that the official proceedings of this planning hearing officer's hearing are recorded on tape and as part of the public record. Notification of this hearing was accomplished by use of the public notices which were mailed to property owners located within 500 feet of the subject properties, physically posted on the site in question, and placed in the local newspaper. Now we have two cases scheduled for today. The first one is a conditional use permit located at 1614 East Colorado Street. And the applicant is requesting that this case be continued to August 25th. Now, I've received two uh, requests to speak cards. And if you would like to go ahead and give your testimony, that's fine. But know that this case will not be heard today and will be heard on August 25th. And the project will be re-noticed accordingly. So I have a card uh, for Sonia and a card for Bill. Did you want to uh, provide any testimony or hold off until the 25th? Okay, I'll go ahead and we'll include the speaker slips with the application so that we know that you are both here today. So thank you very much for coming for that. August 25th, and as I mentioned, it will be re-noticed. The second case on the agenda is a variance. Standards variance to construct an 810 square foot addition to an existing single family residence without providing a third covered and enclosed parking space located at 1121 Hillcroft Road. Under the provisions of Title 30, Chapter 30.43 of the Glendale Municipal Code, a variance shall be granted if four required findings are present. And they are, number one, that the strict application of the ordinance would result in practical difficulties or unnecessary hardship inconsistent with the general purposes and intent of the ordinance. Second, that there are exceptional circumstances or conditions applicable to the property involved or to the intended use or development of the property that do not apply generally to other property in the same zone or neighborhood. Third, that the granting of the variance will not be materially detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to the property improvements in such zone or neighborhood in which the property is located. And fourth, that the granting of the variance will not be contrary to the objectives of the ordinance. If evidence, the evidence presented in the application today and at the hearing meets the criteria described, then the hearing officer can either approve or impose conditions for approval on the case in question. If the findings of fact are not evident, then the request will be denied. This is how the hearing will proceed. I will read the description of the application the request. I will also read uh, any letters received or communication from interested parties. The case planner will make a brief overview of the case, giving an analysis and then making a recommendation. At that point, the applicant will be asked to come forward, stating both name and address, and will be asked to present the case within a 15-minute time limit and also to address the, uh, the findings relevant to the case. Then, if there's anyone else in the audience that is either in support or opposition to the application and other interested parties, will be allowed to come forward to speak, again, clearly stating name and address. 
and they will be given a three-minute time limit. And then lastly, the applicant will be given an opportunity to make any closing comments, if desired, in response to testimonies given by any of the preceding speakers, and they will have a five-minute time limit. Okay, so as mentioned, the proposed project is located at 1121 Hillcroft Road. It's a variance to allow construction of an 810 square foot addition to an existing single family residence without providing a third covered and enclosed parking garage. Um, we've received two letters from neighbors and I'll quickly read through them. The first one is from, I know I'm going to pronounce this name right, Gavorkian and Martirosian families located at 1100 Hillcroft Road. <laughs> and there was basically a letter is in opposition. The letter says we reside at 11 Hillcroft Road for the past 17 years. Our home, a 6,700 square foot residence, currently has three car garage and capacity for five additional cars on the property. When we purchased our home back in 1994, we demolished the existing two car garage and built a new three car garage in order to not park cars on Hillcroft Road. Hillcroft Road is very narrow and on any given day it surpasses its street parking capacity due to on-street parking by owners and their guests and makes it very difficult and dangerous to drive through this stretch of the road between 1105 and 1125 Hillcroft. The owners of 1121 Hillcroft Road always park one car on the street by allowing them to increase an additional 810 square feet to the residence without providing the third car garage. You are inviting and allowing them to park additional vehicles on Hillcroft Road and further congest this small stretch of residential neighborhood and increase hazard to the neighbors and residences. We strongly oppose the variance as it will increase on-street parking and hinder the traffic flow on Hillcroft Road and create danger to the neighbors. The second letter was received from Ruth Villalobos and basically states that she is against the construction of the, of the addition and wants to protect the neighborhood from um, mansionization and that's basically a, a summary of her letter. I'm going to uh, give the case over to Gabriel Reza to do his presentation. Good morning, Mr. Collins. Good morning, sir. Okay. Um, the project proposal is as follows. A request for a standard of variance to construct an 810 square foot rear addition to an existing 3,000 30 square foot single family residence without providing the required three covered and enclosed garage structure in the R1R restricted residential zone. Um, previous permits for this site is as follows. Only one setback variance, um, case number 10357-S, an application to legalize a stucco retaining wall within the front setback area was approved and granted September 26 of 2002. Moving on to the analysis of this variance request, the subject site includes a 3,030 square foot single family residence with an attached 16 by 18 legal nonconforming garage. The applicant is requesting a standards variance to construct 810 square foot addition without providing the required three covered and enclosed parking spaces. The zoning code requires three covered and enclosed parking spaces for a single family residence over breaching 3,500 square feet in floor area. The purpose of this variance is to assure that no property, because of special circumstances, shall be deprived of privileges commonly enjoyed by other properties in the same zone or vicinity. Strip applications of the zoning code to provide the required three car covered enclosed parking space will result in practical difficulties and unnecessary hardships that are inconsistent with the general purpose and intent of this ordinance. The existing 360 square foot two car garage has an interior dimensions of 16 by 18. If the existing two car garage were to be reconstructed and provided with a three car garage, unnecessary hardships and practical difficulties will occur, such as an additional interior setback variance, 
and an impractical modification of the existing area of the home at the rear yard to accommodate this development standard. Granting of the variance for this specific section of the code will not be materially de detrimental to the public welfare, nor will it be contrary to the objectives of the ordinance since the project will maintain the single family land use of the property and will comply with other zoning and building code regulations. Staff believes that the project meets all four required findings and fact necessary to approve the variance request. Staff is recommending approval of the project with eight conditions, and I can go over those eight conditions if you would like. Condition number one, that the development shall include a substantial accordance with plans submitted on the application presented at the hearing, except for any modifications that may be required to meet specific code standards of other conditions stipulated here in the approved by the hearing officer. Condition number two, that the addition shall meet other code requirements, including the five-foot interior setback portion of the addition. Condition number three, that all necessary permits shall be obtained by the Permit Services Center and all construction shall be compliance with the Glendale Building Code and other applicable regulations. Condition number four, that the Design Review Board approval shall be obtained prior to the issuance of the building permit. Condition number five, that all lighting and other sound produced on these premises shall not be audible off-site or do not disturb persons or occupancies, businesses, or anyone in the public right-of-way. Condition number six, that buildings, sidewalks, curb, gutter, fences, landscape areas, etc., adjacent to the site shall not be damaged. If, if damaged, the property shall be repaired to the satisfaction of the Community Planning Department or Public Works Department. Condition number seven, that these premises be maintained in a clean, orderly fashion. I'm, I'm sorry, clean, orderly condition, free of trash, reeds, and graffiti. And the last condition, that any expansion or modification of the structure of the use will require a new variance application. That concludes my presentation, Mr. Collins. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. All right, thank you, Mr. Reza. At this point, I'm going to open up the public hearing, and uh, I'd like to hear from the applicant, which is Ms. Janelle Williams. Uh, please state your name and address for the record, and opening the public hearing. Good morning, Mr. Collin. My name is Janelle Williams. My office is located at 2418 Honolulu Avenue in Montrose. I have been given a copy of the, the two letters from neighbors, um, and the Reagans are here, the property owners. I am not the property owner. One of the uh, letters shows me as the property owner. The Reagans are here, and they will speak to the issues raised. Um, I just wanted to say... On the one letter from the owners of 1100 Hillcroft Road, I note that their, uh, their home is 6,700 square feet, and, uh, which would require at least a three-car garage, I would think. Um, we are proposing 3,840, which is nearly half of that. So that's just one thing I wanted to mention about that. The other letter... Um, uh, is from a neighbor who tried to add 20 square feet to their home and were told that they needed a three-car garage. That neighbor did not apply for a variance. So we don't know how that would have come out. Um, I think that that would have been considered in a variance. Most of the houses in this neighborhood have two-car garages as they were built back in the 20s, and that was the standard for the day. Uh, the property... To the south of, uh, of ours has a two-car garage. Property to the north of ours has a two-car garage with a tandem situation. Um, and I will just begin by going through the, f the findings for this. Thank you. Uh, how will the strict application of the provisions result in practical difficulties or unnecessary hardships inconsistent with the general purpose and intent of the ordinance? We're not proposing any changes to the use of the property, only an exception to the one development standard for parking, and that is to maintain the existing garage that doesn't meet the requirements of a three-car garage. Um, again, when the house was built, the requirements of the day were met. The subject property is 12,920 square feet. Most of that property, however, is a, a down slope off of the back of the 
the home. The certain features of the property make complying with the zoning standards very difficult and would create a significant hardship, which this variance process is intended to alleviate. If the strict application of the provisions of the ordinance were applied in this case, the practical difficulty and unnecessary hardship it would create uh, would seriously put the project uh, uh, at risk. They would have to sacrifice actual living space to increase the interior garage area. It would destroy the design of the garage, and still that widening would create another um, variance issue. The intent of the code is met with this application, however, and is sufficient with the current garage configuration. The existing home was built in 1927. The property owners have lived in the home since 1986. And as you can imagine, certain upgrades are needed at this time to modernize the home and make it a bit more comfortable and practical for the Reagans. They do have some leaking problems. I know that they have uh, uh, a clo clothing closet upstairs that that's a triangular shape. You can't even fit clothes in it. I, uh, but that was the design in, back in 1927. Um, currently the home is 3,030 square feet. The addition of 810 square feet to the house spread out at the uh, upper story and in the, in the rear will allow the property owners to have an upgraded living environment and not intensify the parking demand. The existing structure does not allow for a three-car garage to be constructed without resulting in a driveway length that's shorter than 18 feet minimum due to the angled lot configuration at that corner of the house and resulting in another setback problem. The property is well kept, charming and consistent with good quality construction of the early 20th century and historically relevant to Glendale and to the Ross Mine neighborhood, although it is not on the uh, list. Uh, second finding, what exceptional circumstances or conditions apply to the property involved or to the intended use or development of the property that do not apply generally to other property in the same zone or neighborhood? Parking is provided in an existing oversized one-car garage or an undersized two-car garage with an interior dimension of 16 feet 10 and a half wide, 18 feet 1 and a half deep for a total of 360 square feet. The garage is attached and set back from the front of the house. We're unable to widen the driveway to comply without making the driveway length non-compliant, triggering another variance issue or encroaching the garage into the living space, eliminating a window and destroying the existing fireplace that's on that side. The backyard is hilly and wooded with a flat rear patio behind the garage and terraced landscaping down the hill. Extending the garage to create a tandem situation would remove their only usable private outdoor space. Given the constraints of the lot and exceptional circumstances, there's no other option for the home to provide more covered parking. Accessing the lot from the rear for parking is impractical due to the topography in fact, there's no reasonable option for remodeling to any degree without triggering a variance for the garage. I have a couple of photos I'd like to submit um, with respect to the garage. The first one is the uh, from the front of the home looking at the garage and into the garage where you can see that there is ample room for two cars to park comfortably inside. The second photograph shows the rear of the garage with their outdoor patio. It also shows where the, the lot drops off. Okay. Why will the granting of the variance not be detrimental to the public welfare? The proposed use will not constitute a nuisance, nor be detrimental to the health, safety, general welfare, or to the environment. The project will not change the single-family residential land use, will remain consistent with the residential general plan designation. The project is consistent with the R1R single-family residential zoning, given that use of the property will remain consistent with the neighborhood and the requirements for parking are completely satisfied in their intent. The total amount of parking available in the garage, in the driveway, 
and along the front of the property satisfies the parking demand generated by any existing and future occupancies of the house and exceeds the amount of parking that will actually be needed for the use. The garage is consistent and compatible with others in the neighborhood, on the block, and in the Ross Moyne area. And the last finding, why will the granting of the variance be in keeping with the objectives of the ordinance. The intent of that regulation to provide adequate off-street parking will be preserved with the existing driveway and garage in that the improvements to the home will not result in the loss of any existing parking area. The code envisions allowing upgrades to single-family homes in order to keep them consistent with current residential standards and to ensure continuity and stability of owner-occupied housing in Glendale. This remodel will enable the homeowners to enjoy an upgraded environment that does not generate the need for additional off-street parking, nor does it remove any private outdoor space, nor does it interfere with the neighbors. Um, and I do have some additional facts. The angled configuration of the lot with the current placement of the house makes it impossible to comply with the garage standards as they exist today. On a home built in 1927, the garage is ample, adequate, and, and very charming as it exists. And in addition, two cars do fit in the garage, and two can fit in the driveway if needed, and ample street parking exists on Hillcroft as well. No changes are needed to the garage to meet the intent of the code as it is already met. Um, and I will end here, answer any questions you may have, or if you'd like to hear from the property owners now, I'll step aside. I think at this point I'd like to hear from the property owners. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker card I have is for um, Magda Reagan. Did I pronounce that right? And please come up and give your name and address for the record, please. I'm Magda, excuse me. I'm Magda Reagan, and I live at 1121 Hillcroft Road. Sorry for my voice. That's okay. Um, I just want to address the neighbor that spoke regarding my husband's car. That he parks in front of our house. Um, there's plenty of space for him to park, actually, in our driveway and being at least five feet from the property line. But his business, the business he is in, he's in and out a lot. It's just easier to park on a street so that he doesn't have to be backing out, which is a little bit difficult because of the corner next to our house. There's Rosmoin goes down and meets Greenbrier, and there's a lot of traffic going on that little street. And if you, anyone parks actually on a house next to us, it makes it more difficult when you backing out. It's actually safer for him to park there, but there's no problem if it's required that he moves his car to the driveway. We don't have an objection. Mm -hmm. And uh, I so also like to say that the same people who are actually complaining park their SUV. I don't have their license plate because I didn't know they had written this letter. They always park on the street because actually two families live in that house, which I believe is against the city code, and they all have cars. So their SUV is always on the house actually across from us. So I find it ironic that they would complain when they themselves park on the street, and their house is obviously twice as large. And I didn't even know they had build an uh, extra garage room. I don't know. I never saw a permit sign in front. And um, I, I really have no idea how they could have done a three-car garage because it's right on the property line, their garage. So my answer to that is it can be fixed if there is an objection by the city that my husband parked in front of our house. But there's many people that park in front of their houses. It's not just us. Right. Other than that, I really don't have anything to say. I don't know who this person is. And I guess Janelle addressed their issue. 
But that's okay. my, I don't have a problem. Thank you. No. Thank you. And I want to add that you've been to my house, yes. and you know, you mentioned the other variants that we received. Yes. We would never want it to make our house twice as large. We would never want to make our house look ugly. And as you witness, we have done the work that we've done. You wouldn't even know that it wasn't there in the beginning of time. Because we care about how not only our house looks, but also the neighborhood. So I don't see how anybody would object. And it's actually, as you've probably seen from the architect design, it's going to be built on top of what's already there. Right. Thank you. I understand. Thank you. Ms. Williams, did you have? Uh, do you have any questions for me at this time? Not at this time, no. Okay, I, then I just want to add that this current plan that we're presenting is the third or fourth reiteration of, uh, of the, the original plan. First, we had a setback request that was modified, so we pulled out of the setback. We well, eliminated that request. We also had a height issue. We've eliminated that. This is the only remaining issue that we can't seem to get around. And uh, so on that, we're asking for consideration for this one issue. Um, the existing garage was code compliant when the property was originally developed. And as you can see in the photograph, it's, the arch design is very quaint and, and adds to the charm of the neighborhood and the architectural integrity of the home. And um, we respectfully request approval of this request. And I also want to thank you, Gabe, for all the work you did on this and for meeting with us so many times to reduce our variance request. Um, one question. Ms. Williams, did you, I assume you've read through the proposed draft conditions of approval? I have. I have. And as I have actually one change for number five, but can you tell me what it is? Well, I'm suggesting that it be reworded something to the effect that all light, exterior lighting on the premises shall be directed down and shall not disturb persons on the adjacent properties. Oh, I, I see. Okay. That's just a change to condition number five? To number five. If I may, I'd like to hand these conditions um, to the property owners and have them take a quick look at it. That's fine. Thank you. Conditions they agree to the conditions of approval and the amended? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. At this point, I'm going to close the public hearing. And I have been out to the property and drove the neighborhood. Um, I've also reviewed the plans and examined the findings as proposed by staff and uh, based off the findings recommended by staff, the facts and information that were presented today at this hearing, I am going to recommend approval of the project. After this hearing, the decision will be prepared in writing. It will be in the form of a letter sent to the applicant and to all persons who uh, responded to the public notice, either by speaking at the hearing or by submitting written responses and have provided their name and mailing address. And the date of the decision will be the date appearing on that letter. As it relates to appeals, if there are any potential appeals, under the appeal provision, Title 30, Chapter 30.62 of the Glendale Municipal Code, 
The decision may be appealed to the Planning Commission within 15 days of the date of the decision. Again, the date of the decision will be the date that appears on that letter. Anyone wishing to appeal may obtain forms and brochures on the procedures from the Building and Safety Section within the Permit Service Center located in the Municipal Surface Building, Room 101. This hearing is now officially closed. I want to thank everybody for coming. And also a note, a reminder that 1614 East Colorado is being continued until August 25th. And are there any questions? I'm not, I'm not sure whether we can. That's okay. And why don't you step forward, please, and give your name and address? I, not, I need those two cards we filled out. I need it back because we are not sure whether we can attend the, the hearing. I thought it's today, so we. We must we have to reschedule our business and so on. So yeah, if you want, I can hang on to him and pass him on to the case planner, so that he knows that you were here in audience. If we if we attend, we will fill it out again. There's no sense to come here and without any hearing and then submit any paper for some in the future date. This at least shows you know to the public that you are here and you made the effort That's to okay. come in. So someone should have notified us actually that there's, there's a rescheduling. It was, happens at last, unfortunately. So, I mean, it's not going to make a difference per se if we hang on to it and you fill out a new one because it would be a new date and all that as well. Yeah, we like to have them back because we didn't. Okay, so we need to hang on to it. Even though we did not have a chance to have a... Uh, right, a it at least shows that you are here and it becomes part of the public record. I have the reason why I asked that. Because this case last year, they bring up the same thing in Western Town. For, for city council. We went to this council meeting. And we want everyone, nay, 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 nay. And this year they come back again, it's the same story. So I don't want them to know me at all. That's why, that's it's one of the reasons. This I, advantage for me to This is something know. we deal with, a party that deal with in this kind of uh, dangerous business to the children. And if we want to have, we want to be, want to have the hearing, we want, don't want at least we don't want to post it outside say, hey, we are going to be here, we are going to be against you, and imagine our safety. This is, hope you understand. I understand what you're saying. And this is public record. Anyone can access to it. Right, but all it, ha it has your first name on it, and that's it. Yeah, but it, it has the address. Address. Okay, so I understand. we like to be on the protective side. And at least for, and also at the same time for the public good. Everyone could have just a threat and stay back and don't even show up. You, want, you don't want to encourage that kind of situation. This is democracy. But at the same time, we don't want to have so much risk involved. I understand what you're saying. But it, we'll hang on to it as part of the public record. If you want to maybe submit a letter of where you stand on it, then that's fine. But I apologize for the inconvenience. You know, the yeah, cases do get continued. When we submit the, that one, we expect to have a hearing. But if there's no hearing, why you keep the, keep the record? We don't want it. We don't want to be in the record. All right, let me do some research on it, and then I'll get back to you. Thank you for coming. you straightforward. What is the reason that you keep that card that have it's, my name on it? It's part of the public record. That's part right. of the history of, of what has happened today. Okay, even that, though we did uh, not want to speak? Yes. I still have a, if we did not want to speak, don't want to be involved, you still have, want to have a keep as a public record? 
Excuse me, one second, Ms. Mr. Collins. I believe the, the the lady and gentleman can have their address removed. And if I, be, I believe I've checked with staff, we can is that if it's acceptable that, that, that we remove your address. Okay. Please, please, please. Okay. Yeah, yeah, let, let, let me cross it off. Thank you very much for the idea. Yeah. But we deal with our safety. Okay. I don't. Okay, it's Wednesday, October 11th, and again, the hearing is officially closed. Thank you.